would like to welcome our international trio of Lynn Wallace, David McAllister, and David Nixon. Thank you for being with us. And um, let me start off with an opening question. Why should a dancer enter a competition and uh, what should they expect to get out of it? And I think the idea of going into a competition to win in dance is really not the best way to achieve something. I think you have to say to yourself, what is it I want to get out of this? How can I be a better dancer at the end of this? How can I um, engage better with new things like choreographers and different styles and, and different people? And I really think that if you go on that journey, um, I'm, I'm thinking of it in a way like people often in competitions, they only do the steps that they can do well and that show them off to their very best. And that isn't really taking a step forward in their, their lives as a dancer. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't do any of those, but I think you should look at things. What do I want to do, do better? You know, what vocabulary or what way of using music or what expressive paths do I want to take a journey on in, in this competition? And I think if you do that, regardless of where you fall in the competition, you're a winner because you have made progress in your career and you have done it in the way that a professional dancer does it in a company. So th that's kind of my perspective on it and it's why I really think this competition from the RED is very good for dancers because of the way it's set up and designed. I, look, I totally agree with that, David. I think, you know, when you go in to win a competition, you're only going to lose because you're, you're not actually there to, um, as you say, experience the whole, the whole thing. And when you think the opportunity to dance on stage in front of people is what we're all aiming to do uh, as dancers. So a competition is just another opportunity to do that. I think it's a wonderful opportunity for the students to be part of the creative process particularly in this competition, and uh, the opportunity for them to really learn um, from their teachers, from the coaches, from the musicians, uh, from the choreographers. Oh, another element that is probably new to a lot of the competitors at the Fontaine is there is obviously new people teaching class, and um, there is a choreographic element where everybody's learning a new piece of choreography and not in a, a long amount of time. So. Um, a lot of students have probably spent you know, six months preparing for the one solo that they could perform and they work consistently with their own teacher. Um, how can you get some in suggestions about how people should mentally prepare for this sudden change of personnel that they're working for? And, you know, we all have different learning styles. So, um, you know, how to make feel comfortable with your own learning style within a different kind of environment. So I think the most important thing is when you go to the competitions and you have these um, these different teachers and coaches and, and also working with a choreographer. I know myself when I was a kid, we, um, we did a lot of syllabus work and I didn't really have that opportunity of doing three classes. And I think, first of all, it's really good to speak to your parents or your teacher and try and get that opportunity to work with different people, you know, at a summer school. And, and I know now in the RID syllabus, there's so much more free exercises that you get given. Um, but when you're in that situation where you are being in a, um, a coaching type situation, make sure that you really concentrate on what the teacher or the choreographer is talking about and demonstrating. Because we get so caught up in that bubble where, you know, we're worried about what the, the jury might be seeing or what the other competitors might be seeing, or even, you know, some of the audience members if you're doing it in front of an audience. And it's, you, you've got too many things going on in your head. You can't actually concentrate on the work that's being set. So then you have that dual panic of having to try and remember while you know, um, your brain's been going in 10 different directions. So forget about everyone else. You can only drive your own car. You can only be in charge of your own body. I absolutely agree with don't panic. Um, I found as a student that I took quite a while to learn things. Once I'd learned them, it was fine, but I, I seemed to take longer than everybody else. So my way of, of helping myself on that was to immediately write everything down and then I could go back and uh, look at it. And in my own time, when I wasn't uh, feeling a bit panicky, I could uh, go through everything um, equally with corrections. And uh, I, th I think for students being adaptable is, re is really important. I think that Lynn's right. Um, I find a lot of dancers write things down at the end of the rehearsal. Um, if they don't have those kind of memories that they feel that they can retain it. Um, I think that David's absolutely right. Just relax. Like when you're nervous, you can't absorb anything. 
because you're in, as my wife would say, a state of panic and you're, you're not behaving in the way you would normally. So I know it's easier said than done, but it, you need to practice it. Um, I think the other thing is, is being really open. Like you have to understand that there are many ways of saying things as Lynn said, but there are many ways that people like things to be done. And you're going to be asked that as a dancer. I mean, you are going to be asked to change things. And it's, it's not always, um, you know, you find the way of doing it in which it feels right to you, but you still have to listen to those things and, and adapt. Um, I think the other thing is often dancers only focus on the feet. So somebody's setting a combination or they're working on choreography and all you're picking up are the, is the footwork. You need to look at the whole picture and you need to look at the feeling of the person doing it. What is the, the feeling you're getting from, from that body? And the other thing is don't immediately jump into doing it with them because the minute you start doing it, they turn one way, you turn upstage and you've missed the next steps because you're not looking at them. So I think really putting your attention on them calmly, looking at the whole picture and then, um, as Lynn said, if you need to and write it down later, as David said, you need to reflect on it and, you know, think about it so that when you come back the next day, you're not worried about it, that you're moving on to the next step. Stepping back a little bit, can you give a little thought about um, finding the right solo to, for yourself? So I know I said that you should go into a competition um, working on things and having an aspiration. But at the same time, um, for instance, if you have a very weak jump, don't pick a solo that's only jumping because you're really not going to make it. Or for instance, recently I saw that um, many people were picking solos that had turns in that they couldn't do at all. So every time, and often in these classical solos, um, for some reason or another, we have to repeat things three times. So if you can't do a step, we see it three times that you can't do it. So really think about a combination of when you're picking those solos of how it fits you and what you can gain from it. And there's a combination in that, I think, to, to be met. I totally agree with what David said. I think sometimes we have an idealized opinion of what we would like to look like when we're dancing a solo. Um, but you have to be really, really honest with yourself and really you know, face yourself in the mirror and go, is this putting me at my best? Um, advantage and am I showing off all the things that I can do well as David said you know if you're not a great turner work on it in class but don't pick it as your variation for the um, competition but from a judge's point of view what do you think makes a successful candidate we've talked a lot about um, being very receptive being focused observant um, all those things set the pathway for a successful candidate, I think. Um, proper research, as Lynn did, choosing solos that are appropriate, and yet they have some element of ambition to them. Um, I think, you see, the thing is, at the end of the day, many people can do the variation. The winner will be somebody who makes choices, artistically, especially through music, through texture, through dynamics. When people are really authentic on stage too, um, you get it, you, you understand when you see someone that, um, as David says, they're making choices, but they're making their own choices. They're not making choices that their teacher might have told them to do or that they've seen on YouTube. There's nothing more disappointing than when you see a dancer in a competition that's basically stealing their performance from, you know, Marianella Nunez or, you know, Carlos Acosta or, you know, Sylvie Guillem. You want to be 100% authentically yourself. And yes, look at all those variations and do the research and, you know, think, oh, how, how would I do that? And I think for me, musicality, you know, musicality, people who listen to the music and embody the music, as George Valentin says, um, not just dancing their own rhythm, which bears no relationship to what the music is telling them to do. Well, thank you so much, all of you. Um, I think there's been some real gems in here that I hope that everyone listening will be totally enriched by. Um, and I thank you so much for taking your time to chat with me today and to share all those wonderful thoughts. Thank you so much.